your Bibles. And go home. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just take your Bible. Take someone else's Bible. Everybody just take a Bible. There's some there's some under the church pews. Um, hang on to it. I guess if I had you turn any place tonight, I would have you, if you could, take two two passages of scripture. One is James 112. Uh, there's several in tonight. And then the other one I'd really like for you to, to find and put your finger on uh, for later, hopefully, is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And as you're looking for those, let me ramble a little bit. Uh, the last couple of Sundays, uh, the last couple of Wednesdays, I'm sorry, and it, yeah, I guess it has carried over into Sunday somewhat. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Yeah. What I've been trying to challenge you on is thinking about, uh, I, I used early on or two weeks ago, I used the words uh, correcting our minds about God uh, and correcting the lies about God. And as I was studying this week, I kept thinking maybe that's not quite the right choice of words. Maybe it's more improving our minds uh, about God. Uh, because we know if we renew our minds, we are constantly learning more and more improving ourselves in Christ. Correcting the lies about God, when I said that, was really more directed towards uh, really trying to change the world's perception of who God is. Right. Uh, and what I mean by that is I do believe a lot of people just see God as a yes, no, right, wrong, punish, no punish. You know, if I, if I, if I commit, I'm just, my life is over because there's just no, right, there's just no fun, there's no life. So uh, if I could, I, I, would, I would slightly say that I'm changing that verbiage a little bit to improve in our minds. Um, and as far as the other part, correcting the lies about God, really what I would say there, and please understand these words, is, is really challenging our fact of, of, of changing our spiritual ignorance. Now that's a tough word. I, I mention that a lot because when you say ignorance, a lot of people get redneck bow up. You call me stupid. No, uh, uneducated and ignorance doesn't necessarily mean that you're stupid. It just means that, and, and this way I intend it, is that you don't have the true facts, right? Uh, and the true facts, especially with God, works well in our world today because people, what are we hearing more than we hear the true facts? Matter of fact, when you really think about it, what have we tried so hard for the last, well, we're 2022 now, so really the last 70 years, so really, well, probably from the beginning, but really hard since the 50s, we've been trying to do what with God? Get him out. Get him out. Why? No basis, mm -hmm. no truth. Who's to argue, right? That's the clutter. That's the clutter that we're hearing in our lives today, folks. That's why you hear so much of it. Uh, and honestly, it really is. Uh, so why is this important? Why is this important? Because when you really break it down to the basics, we're constantly being bombarded by issues of life. Uh, and, and those issues of life, I think, can make us question, and stay with me for just five minutes on this before you, before you start thinking too far, but I really feel like sometimes, and what I guess what I'm trying to say this evening is after you become a Christian, after you become a Christian, the issues of life that we deal with, we were going down that list tonight, death, car wrecks. I was thinking about y'all specifically when I was thinking this this week. How easy, and I'm not saying you did, just saying, but how easy is it you're leaving church, you've been heavily involved in church, you've been coming, you've been doing all kinds of things, and suddenly you're driving home and you totally <coughs> total your car by hitting a hog, right? We say, well, that's life. Hogs run out in the road, deer, things happen. But... Have you ever been there? Don't have to answer the question, but have you ever been there and said, why me? Huh? Why me, God? Why? Why? See? So when I talk about the last couple of weeks, challenging you to think about salvation from the perspective of it's just not about cleansing your sins, right? It's not a yes, no, good, bad, but challenging the fact that you look at your life from the perspective of Life, salvation is life. Salvation is all life. It's all about life. It's everything about life. And trying to pull away from the fact that, well, I got saved, so I have got forgiveness of my sins, so that is good. That is good. But what I'm really driving at, that's just a small percentage of what you really accepted, right? You got life. You got life. In this, when we say these things, like in this example, again, didn't say y'all did. I might. But didn't say y'all did. What we're really questioning when we question these things in life is what I'm saying. When we believe in God, I believe in God, and in that we say God is sovereign. 
Sovereign. I always say that wrong. Sovereign. Southern. Southern. He's not Southern, but he's sovereign. sovereign. Right? Oh, oh. In that sovereignty, <laughs> think about it. When we really question, and this is the core of what I'm really digging at tonight and have been trying to dig at, when we question, are we allowed to question? Yes. Sure. But when we question, what are we really questioning? God, do you really love me? Which, well, yes. And really questioning the sovereignty of God, right? right. That, right. that what he is and does is perfect. Oh, thank you. I think I have those exact words. Well, I do. It's to believe that no matter what God is, was, and will always be pure, wholesome, and correct in all things. Ooh. Correct in all. Thus, the sovereignty of God. So again, yes, I'm wanting you to think. I'm wanting to push you. I'm wanting you to think about this situation, not just the acts of sin, right? See, the, the, to me, those are rudimentary uh, basics, right? The, the, the act of sin. Well, okay, I had a sin. Guess what? We talked about this. What's going to happen after you get saved dealing with sin? Keep it cleaned out. But what happens, though? Keep doing it. You still sin, though, yes. right? Yeah, it's still there, right? I mean, you still deal with it. You hopefully, but hopefully, you're you, you're dealing, you're you're moving further away from it all the time. But does do you have an old one that sneaks up and bites you every now and then? Huh? Oh no, really? Right, it does. So if we spend all of our time, if we spend all of our time worrying about these, can I use the word temptations, these right. sins, and never grow out of them, go back with me now, how do we grow out of them? I improve my mind through renewing. I got my hands free now and talk. I can renew my mind daily in what? Power of God. Right. To overcome, as Paul said, what? My physical physical problems that I'm dealing with, my sins, my temptations, my weaknesses. We all got them. They're a little different in each, but we got them, right? He did. He, I mean, you know, so so in that, we're trying to overcome those acts. But what I'm really trying to say is as we grow as Christians, it should be growing away from, yeah, I know this is this is my thorn, as Paul said, right? This is my thorn. I ask God for, to forgive it, but I move forward, right? I move forward in Christ and trying to understand more about my relationship with God, realizing that sometimes you hit a hog in life. It doesn't necessarily mean the unexpected. That, yeah, well, that's Barbara. Barbara's picking on me. She said, that was an unexpected expected because that's what we spoke on last Sunday night. I was like, yes, yeah, India's like, uh, she had the unexpected expected. That's why we have you. And that was a bad. I'm sorry for the example, but it really was. Yeah. You know, I was like, this week these these things happen, right? Right. And the question is, really tempted. I'm gonna find my notes right quick because, uh, why has this blank and you? You can say it to yourself, but I, I think we've all been there. Why has this, you fill in the blank, happened to me? Right? So another way of saying it is, why has this happened to me? Why did this happen to me? Why, Bernie, where you were, why did what? God allow this to happen to me? Why is God picking on me? Huh? He's testing testing. He's building. He's testing. He's building. And we're and hopefully I'm gonna get back to that because I, I that's this really that's really the end of where we're going right there. Hang on to that because I got a good example of that. But in all this what I want to do is pull you back to this verse in 1 Corinthians 10 13. 1 Corinthians 10 13 says listen to these words now it says no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what? Mm. <clears throat> but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So when I asked that question a while ago, why, God, did this happen to me? Hmm? Why, why did this happen? Why? Well, he just, well, yeah, sometimes it's a test. But what I'm really going to drive at tonight a little bit, Satan has to use something to keep you busy, right? right? I'm just telling you, right? I'm just telling you, he's very good at this whole situation. Satan is driving at some of these situations because here's my point. If you've accepted Christ, you announced that you're what? What did you announce to Christ when you accepted him? Yes. He is, but what did you do but to get there? What did sinner. you tell him that you were? Sinner. I'm a sinner. I finally recognize I'm a sinner, Scotty. I don't got it all together like I thought I did. That wasn't good English either. I don't have it together as I thought I did. You don't have it. I don't speak well either. So, anyway, 
Uh, but no, to the fact of the lie, we admit right there. I'm a, all we're doing is really acknowledging the fact of what he already told us we were, right? And that's what I'm saying. Is it, is it serious? Yeah, it's serious. We need, we need to overcome the sin. But we admit that right at that point. We admit that very much thing at the point. What we're moving on from there is, if you've already admitted you're a sinner, and this is what I really tell people a lot, if you sin, don't hide it. That's the whole purpose of forgiveness. If I have transgressions against Butch and I'm going to hold it, it's going to show up, right? And that's the whole point. If there's if there's uh, issues in the relationship, if there's issues between people, if there's sin, the reason we confess it is to release it because uh, if I if I hold a lie against you, I have to hold the lie. Right. I got to deal with it. And it. Yes, the problem is God said, announce it. Ask for forgiveness. Debbie, if you, don't, if you don't forgive me, it's not my problem anymore. Now I've given the problem to you. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you, if, you keep that, if you keep that flushed out, what happens? Somebody can come to you, Todd, and say, well, Todd, this is what I heard about you. And here's the cool part. You're absolutely right. Yep. Why? I'm a sinner. I'm unperfect or imperfect. I have imperfections. I make mistakes. I say the wrong thing. I do the wrong thing. I'm tempted. I fall down. I get back up in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm forgiven those sins if I ask for forgiveness. What that does, that keeps the, it keeps it light on and I'm clean. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh -huh. So when Miss Joe comes to me and said, Brother Tim, I heard you were doing this. <laughs> I can say, you're right, Joe. I did that. I, I did. I, I, I hit him in the back of the head when he went out the door. So. <laughs> But you see the freedom just in the very essence of what you have when you admit what you are to God. Now, here's the deal. If you're going to be that open with Christ in your life, what's Satan, what's Satan going to do with you? Listen, now this is why I want you to think about, well, there you go. That's why I want you to look at that word, no temptation. No temptation. No temptation has over, but what's that word temptation? What is that temptation? Take temptation, temptation. What's that old song, Temptation, something, something, Hidden Snares? I can't remember what it is. I was looking for a note I made, sorry. Uh, temptations, to desire to do something wrong. But the other definition of temptation is the desire to do something unwise. Okay. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Now, come back to where I was a while ago with the sovereignty of God. Sovereignty of God. Come back to that whole concept. If we say... That God is sovereign in my life. He's beginning and middle. He has won this battle. He's in control. I don't understand why I'm dealing with all the stuff that I'm dealing with, right? I, I don't totally understand sometimes. I don't understand why I hit I was, I was at church all day long, right? I told my husband I loved him that day. I was nice and kind to everybody. I don't think so. <laughs> I know I was stretching, but I was trying to make a point. <laughs> and then I hit a hog. Or then... I found out I had cancer, or then I lost a loved one, or then a bill came. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right? The things of life come. And in that moment, what I'm really challenging is in that moment of self-doubt, Satan has the opportunity to come in and do what? Please. Remove you away and question. Yeah. Yeah. Question sovereignty of God. Now, if you have a major meltdown in front of a, a person and you I mean, really just lose it, then that happens, right? You've really now, you kind of hurt your witness of what? Because what they could say is, well, Cindy, I'm sorry. And this sounds cold and hard, and I don't mean it to. I, I thought you were, so a pig took you out? I don't go to church anymore because I got mad at God because I hit a pig. You don't think that's a real sentence, but that's a real sentence for some people. It may not. Now, remember that blank part, remove the pig and put something else in there. But that's a real sentence that people have spoken. They're sitting in their homes all over America tonight. Because blank, blank happened, I don't go to church anymore. Right. Because what you said earlier, Bernie, which was what? Why doesn't God love me? Or I'm mad at God. I'm mad at God. Because he didn't do what I wanted him to do. Didn't go the way I wanted it to. Yeah. Yes, sir? Thank you, Lord. I was wanting a new car. <laughs> <laughs> she just got a new car. <laughs> Jim was thinking, i got to pay the insurance on the next one, so... I'm kind of thinking that, yeah. <laughs> one, one of the, the saddest things I've ever seen, though, is to see someone that, you know, 
cannot forgive cannot and forgive. Um, and that hurt just festers and festers and they turn into such a bitter person mm -hmm. that they ruin every exactly. relationship around them. Yeah, it, it eats them on the inside yes. and it eats on the outside. Mm -hmm. Well, but think about it. It's not just, it's just not just forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. It's the, the uh, well, it's a good example. Our Father God is a good, good Father, okay? Now, my, my examples may be a little uh, basic, but uh, in that very thought or process, if I can find it right quick. Um, okay, here's what I was thinking. In, in lines of what, the things of temptation, temptation, we, we go to immediately, it's really the first definition more than the second definition, because we normally think of temptation as he's tempting me to lie, cheat, steal, right? He's tempting us to sin. I just used my little quotation marks, right? That's, I mean, isn't that what our first thought is when we think of temptation? The devil is trying to tempt me to sin, to transpass, to transgress against my belief, right? To cheat. So, but here's the thing. Father God comes to us from the standpoint of your body, as you know, is a dwelling place of who? God. Tabernacle. Temple. Tabernacle. Here it is. It's in here. So in that, he made it clear that he comes and he lives in us, right? And then he gives us the Holy Spirit for direction, right? So that's all going on. So in that way, our good Father helps us in those times of temptation, right? Jesus uh, 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 on the mount, right? Remember that? Where the devil Satan took him up so you can have all the world you blah, 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 after 40 days of being temptation, tempta tempta temptation. Was it sin to eat? No. no. What was he really offering him? Control, but he wanted him to do what? Worship to denounce God. the sovereignty of God. his father, right? Yeah. Let's get to the core of this, folks. Yeah. See, since Genesis, Satan has been trying to get us to denounce the sovereignty of our God. Right. That's what he got Adam and Eve. That's what he got them to do, right? right. See, we, we, uh, what I'm trying to do is get you to go past the story and see the reality. They're, they're re repetitious, but it, yeah, it's the fruit, it's the Eve, it's the, yeah, again. But getting past that to see what was the real issue. Transpassing against God. Disbelieving the truth. Going against it. Our Father says, and again, forgive the examples, but it's what I had. Uh, if, if, if they bother you. I don't know that maybe they should. Uh, I don't know why I'm apologizing. I'm confused all one moment. I'm having a moment. Anyway, to be, uh, our Father says to be drunk is not a good thing. That's what it says. To be a strong drink, right? Right? That's what the Bible says. It says to be, a, uh, not to cheat, to lie, to steal. It's not good for us. Why? Forgiveness, right? These things that you do to carry these things around with you, they'll affect you more than they will anybody else. If I lie to you, Cindy, the, the, the lie is on what? It's me. I gotta. Keep, I gotta keep this thing going, right? Yeah. You're innocent of a lot. Like what I say, shame on me, right? Yeah. Fool me twice. Uh, overeating, anger. Uh, uh, anger is a huge one in the Bible, right? Yeah. It, it's huge. I mean, anger is big. Not to defile our bodies. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Where Satan is constantly offering us what? He romances the whole time. Live large. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Live large. Do what you want to. Life is a uh, run with scissors. And my thought was run with scissors in the middle of I-30 barefoot and naked if you want to. <laughs> right? Run right down the middle of the road. Because that's really what Satan is telling you. He's telling you you can have it all. You can do it all. You can live it all. And yet, as a good father, I mean, think about the very basics. If you've got children, raised children, been around children, right? What's the whole purpose of parents? Please don't. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. If you get a one-year-old, you got to start all over again for 20 years. you got to do what? No, 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 no. no. You never get to complete a full Rachel sentence. Handle. I, I don't know Rachel that. handle it. I don't know if that always comes out. Please don't do that. Well, I was being polite, Bernie. I was being. But a good father would say, no, don't run. Don't get in the middle of the road, right? Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's, that's, that's the battle. That's the battle. I mean, that's the battle that, uh, that parents, I mean, I, that's the battle. You get tired in the battle, Todd. Yeah. <laughs> Never after working all week do I get tired of going, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't, please don't. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. You don't get, I'm just telling you. No, and that's the way Father is with us, right? If he's a good father, that's what he's trying to do. Say, hey, 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 don't. But in all that, I want to go back to this passage of Scripture and talk about, again, the, the temptation has overtaken us so that you can... You, um, 
such as common demand. I want you to think about those words, that, that temptation word, and if you use the word, listen to it written from this perspective. Or let me let me reread it right quick. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, and who will not who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now let me read it to you this way. Nothing in life can overtake you except such as common to man, to us. Right. Nothing. Listen to the words. Nothing. But God is faithful who will not allow anything in your life to go beyond what you are able to bear. But with these attempts of Satan, that's what they are. But with these temptations, these attempts of Satan will also make the way of escape that you may be able to what? To deal with it. How? By your faith in sovereignty of God. Because where do you get your strength? From God himself. If not, you would still be a natural person in a natural place. And what I want to say to that was, think about it. When you, Before you knew Christ, before you knew the word, simple trinkets of Satan would keep you busy, right? It's a large party, is it not? Huh? I mean, when you literally look back on your life and you think, wow, what kept me busy all those years? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And all that. So the, the thing I'm really driving at is Satan has to up his game is what I'm trying to say, right? As you become into Christ, as you become, Satan has to up his game. He's got to throw some things in front of you that says what? Do you really believe in God? Well, think about this. How about Job? Hmm? How about Job? Not a better, better example that I could think of tonight, but let's see if I, I think. Yeah, in Job, uh, in Job 1, he, uh, he stated in Job 1 that he took really what? Everything that Job had. Everything. 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 Yeah. Physical. And he also told him that he couldn't, you know, he couldn't kill him. He did say he couldn't kill him. So to me it's right. like you, you, hit, you hit a pig, the de you know, the devil tries, is trying to keep you busy, but to me God said, but you can't, you can't harm her, you know what I'm right. saying exactly. And, he, and, he, and when you go into chapter 2, he even allows him to take his what? His health. Family. Took it all. Didn't right? take his wife. No. No. And to your point, Bernie, because in Job, chapter, uh, in Job chapter 2, verse 9, his wife said to him what? Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Curse God and die. Now, that word integrity, at that point, would be our word integrity to us, which would be our belief in the sovereignty yeah, of God, which is faith. faith. So what I'm driving at tonight is when you see these things happen, and they come to us in all various shapes, sizes, forms, different times, I mean, he knows sometimes exactly when to hit you, especially when you're on the mountain, right? He'll roll you off that mountain every time. And the issue is that he's questioning. See, he's not saying, oh, hey, did you tell a lie? Right? Did you make a mistake physically? Did you fall down? Did you, did you sin? Because the ultimate is really when we transgress in our faith that we begin to question, which is what Eve did, right? Did God really say that? Is God, right, Bernie? Is God with all, right? Y'all been through about a year and a half of it. <laughs> Were there times in that situation? This is why this is why I love this because this is reality. This is where it really comes. Uh, Barb and I, we're running all over the world thinking we're going to be this something for the church, for God. We sold our house. We're doing this. And boom, she struck with a, a brain aneurysm. And, you know, it's it's really a life and death few months, right? I'm just going to tell you, there was a moment, hands and knees on the floor. In full, God, what, 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 what? Right. Hmm? And there's a point there in your That's life that you either go this way or you get up and you say, I'm done. I'm done. You got my attention. Right? Because it's either where you're listening, you know, why exactly? I don't know why. Because we were, you know, Cindy, in, in a little more intense example than just hitting the hog. But from the standpoint, we've been going to church. We've been tithing. 
we've been praying, we've been reading our Bible, we were telling other people about it. we were, you know, we were doing we were doing the Christian life. Well, then why? Why? To show his power. The glory. The glory. He wants to be glorified. That's right. Yeah. And in all this, here's the deal though. Even let me let me pull that back out though. I, want, I really want to take that away. Just for a moment. Because what I want you to really think about is in that moment, do you still believe? God. Yes. I, I think he's, I think he's for the Better the car than you. Yep. Right? Do you still speak Jesus? Yes. Do you speak, right. See, there, this is the test that comes from this, this situation. That's what, that's what, I mean, that's what his wife basically came out and said, curse God and die, right? Just get it over with. You've lost everything that's physically tangible to you. And, and, um, a joke of chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. I'm moving back up for that one. It said, So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that I, man has, he will give for his life. This is Satan's thing, right? Right? If you take away everything I've got physically, all my money, all my health, everything, he'll denounce you. And God said, What? You don't know my servant. Because why? God knows the heart. This is the beauty and the power of all of you. Say, well, I'm not sure I'm in line with God. Then what's in your heart? Mm -hmm. You can blab on to me all day long, and I can blab on to you all day long, and I can tell you, tell you what a great guy I am, Todd. But God knows God this God part God right God here. Right? God. That's the beautiful part. So, so he said, but, and, and here, just this is a, we're going to run out of time as always. I just want to throw this in. It's another night. But uh, in Job chapter 4, uh, four, it's made that verse skin for skin. Yes, all that man has, he will give for his life. But in verse five, he said, "Listen to this." But stretch out your yours capitalized, mm -hmm. meaning who? God. God. But stretch it. This is Satan talking to God. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. Did you hear the the acknowledgement that Satan just gave God? Who has control? God. See, we think Satan had control of the circumstance. Did God allow him? Yes, 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 he did. He said, you can have this, you just can't take his life. Yes. But in that very statement right there, if you don't understand the power of God, right there is the fact that even Satan acknowledged the fact that he'll have to do it right. in order to afflict him. Mm -hmm. Hmm? See, we give this, this I'm, a, I'm rabbit trailing on you now. We're gonna, let me run. We give Satan way too much power <laughs> in our life. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. You know, even if we look at this this simple circumstance and say, well, Satan ran a hog in front of me and blah, blah, that's, that's fine. I get it. I was, you know. But at the same time, sometimes things in life happen. The question is, like you said, do I still get out of the car and see God or do I denounce him? See the, see, see what's in front of you. That's why I'm trying to move you past just the, the life. life, life oh, life is about sin. Life is about, oh, did I do that? No, no, no. You've already announced the fact of salvation that you've already accepted and asked for forgiveness of your sins. What sins? All those you committed. Yeah. Those you are committing now. <laughs> Stop, Butch. We're in church. Goodness. <laughs> Give me 30 minutes, Butch. All right, good. No, we, we ask for forgiveness for the ones that we came with. The ones that we have momentarily. And what? Future. Future. See, those, those have all been removed. Praise mm -hmm. God. I've only got just a couple minutes, but give me this if you would. Think about this. When you read that passage of Scripture that you cannot be tempted to more than you can bear, meaning God knows each one of us, God protects each one of you. He will never let you to have, he'll never let Satan have more if you what? Keep the relationship with God. Think about this. In Genesis chapter 6, God observed, judged, and brought sentence on mankind for the second time in its infancy. And y'all know what that was, right? The flood. Right? And he went to Noah and said, the earth will be destroyed by water, by flood, something the world had never witnessed. Think of, just think about that from the standpoint. Never witnessed it, Jim. Never saw rain. Never saw a flood. Never saw... Why? Because, again, he was asking the world to do what? I'm starting to know how that failed. <laughs> <laughs> to believe. To believe. I maybe, maybe I'm thinking to you tonight for strength. So to believe. <laughs> believe, Jim. You can do this. <laughs> no, see, it was another test to see if the, if the world would believe in the what? Suffer deep of God. He said, this is going to happen. Noah put you out there for 120 plus years telling people it's going to rain. 
give you 120 years, right? But to the point, I don't want to go down that road, but tonight, here's what I want you to think about. In Genesis 6, 14 through 16, God gave Noah the exact plans for the ark. Right. Listen to this. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make its rooms in, uh, in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high on the wall, a little window in the end of it. Put a door in the side of the ark and make a lower, middle, and upper decks. So we had first, second, third. This is when uh, the Caribbean cruises started right here, right? First, yeah, second, third. First How much? Ship. Right, first cruise ship right here. Was a bunch of animals. <laughs> Why did God? No difference. Back, back. Come here. I, got, I only got a minute left. I gotta get. Why? I shouldn't move. They didn't have any desserts that day. Why did God do this? To save Noah and anyone that would believe, right? Yeah. To save the animals, both true. To start over again, true. But why God give, gave us this detail was because, listen to me now, God knew how the ark needed to be built to withstand the storm that was coming. Right. I even think to this, for years we've been hunting the ark, right? Hunting it and hunting it. Once again, here's that deal. I need to prove to ourselves. I get really bored with this. We need to find the ark so we can prove this part of the Bible is true. We found some uh, uh, um, uh, chariots at the bottom of the Red Sea. Oh, that, but see, if you need to prove God, you've missed God. Right? But here's the bottom line. God knew how the ark needed to be built to withstand the storm that was coming. The storm was how long? 40 days, 40 nights. Right? Maybe they won't find the ark for this simple reason. God didn't build the ark to last longer than the storm. Can you see, what, are y'all listening? Mm -hmm. Is it seeping in? Because what I'm telling you, God didn't build you to handle any more than you can handle. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He knows you. Right? We say this. He knows. He knew you when you were born. He knew. He knows you. He, knows what's going he has on. a plan for you. This is the part that should give you just a little bit of a goosebump right there if you're listening. Because the fact of life, it's very much in this example to the point. He designed you to be able to handle what life has in front of you. Yes. But he, without him, we can't handle none of it. He's so the strength. We can handle everything. Well, the, I think the point to you, what you're making, is we would get lost in the middle of it. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. We would drown in the middle of it, yeah. right? Satan would take us down. Listen, I, did I, I don't know if I ever read James uh, verse. You did not. Okay, no. James 1, verse 12. Blessed is the person who remains steadfast under trial. For when they have stood the test, they will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Yes. Deuteronomy 31, 8. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Right? right? Revelation 20, 21. He talks about the fact, we've said to use this in service the last two Sundays. I will be with my people. I have created you a place to be. Mm -hmm. But tonight, if I could challenge anything, when you think about your life in Christ, I hope that you have moved past the point of just sin or no sin. Right? right? That's, that's what I'm really driving at. Move past the point. Yeah, am I going to sin? Yeah. Am I going to get angry and say the wrong thing? I have to pray for Barb all the time. She just, I just like, please God forgive her. She's just angry and then it comes out and I'm like. Oh. It's on us to graduate. Well, it's, it's, it's graduation, but it's also movement up the ladder because, again, Satan is going to bring these things into your life to challenge you. And he's not just challenging your physical, financial, or mental capacities. He's challenging you really to, to say, because we say, God has control of my life. So when I step back, you need, and I say, well, then why did he allow this to happen? Or do I really, really at this point, believe? See, now we're challenging what? Testimony. So, sovereignty of God. Do I really have to be obedient? Do I have to be obedient? Yes, I do. All those things. Well, yeah, I guess I am trying to graduate. Move beyond. Just, mm -hmm. is it a temptation? Yeah, you're always going to be tempted. And, if, and here's another deal. If he can keep you busy with the basics then you really need to question where you're going with your Christianity because the whole concept is that, hey, yeah, I got sin. That's what I just told you all ago. I got it. You got it. We all got it. The question is, I ask forgiveness. I move on. Why? Again, I'm going to strive this forever because you're the words, the legs, the ears, the mouth, the witness of Jesus Christ. So if we don't witness Christ, we don't purify, let it go, 
Then we just carry it around, and it, it's like you said, anger's a good one, forgiveness is another one, but the festation is in you, right? Well, that's the what caused it, was yeah, anger so that unforgiven. Right. Yeah. So in your case, in this example we used tonight, or in Barb's case, we could have got, we could get real angry, right? You could have just looked at Jim and said, Jim, I'm done, I'm out, man, I'm just done. This whole church, Every God. Time I go to church, I did it. Yeah, I mean, look, 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 look at all this stuff we've done, and life just still stays hard, right? Well, folks, life is hard. But where you were a while ago, the purpose is, if I have God, now I have something to hold on to, right? Yeah. Have something to look forward to. Right. Amen? Amen. Okay, thank you all so much. Anything in closing? I do have something. With your guys' circumstances with the hog, when I was going through a divorce, I had to fight for my kids a lot. Mm -hmm. And I didn't ever understand that if God brings you to it, he'll bring you through it until I was told that God allows things to happen to you that give you the strongest battles go to the strongest faith believers, whatever. And they gave me hope because a fragile person in a situation like yours, if they hit a hog, boom, like you said, it's done. Rather, you guys, where you're at, it's it's okay. You know, with your faith, your new vehicle, you're safe. A lot of people don't understand that. Where in your situation, it's just a moving up and on because you have the strength, the, the belief, the faith, everything to just keep going. Where somebody that doesn't have that built inside of them, the belief, the faith, they're gone. Okay. So, uh, and in that battle, right there, then where do they get that from? Yeah, they're faith in God. Power and trust. Sovereignty of God. Sovereignty of God. It is. But where do they get it from? No. They get it from these people right here. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. these people can say, yeah, we've been through the storm. Mm -hmm. We got health issues. We got all kind of, we hit a hog, it went bad. He said, well, wow, did you curse God and die? You listening? Bible's real, folks. Did you curse God and die? Huh? It was tough. Man, we went through this. I lost a leg. I lost a toe. I got cancer. I got, I lost a child. Come on, be honest with yourselves. Fill in that blank. Life is difficult. But the power is in the fact that hopefully somebody would come to you, Scotty, and say, hey, did something. you just got through saying, right? Somebody told you what? God brings you to it, he'll bring you through it. But okay. It's you're that peace. For that. You're the witness? It's that if it was given to you, you're, you're able to handle it no matter what. There you go. See, it's there's the beauty of it. it to God. See, exactly. I'm, I'm moving up here and somebody else is down here. When we see that flutter, right, we go to them and say, hey, I love you. Mm -hmm. Don't give up on God, right? right. Don't give up on God. Uh, real quickly, there's a guy right now. That's, uh, that's he's, I found out today I got a customer. He's 43 years old. He just had a massive heart attack. I met the guy. He's kind of—he was kind of like a Red Bull kind of dude when I met him. Right? I thought he's this dude's kind of jacked up. I'm just being honest. I was like, well, I only met him once. And then a guy today told me, well, "Hey, you know, this may be why he was rude to you the other day because he's actually just got out of the hospital, had a massive heart attack." My first thought was, I need to go talk to him because at 42, my life was totally wiped out. Yeah. I was, mm, I ain't y'all ain't got time. It was bad. But what I can tell him now is, hey. I've been where you are. Right. Right? Now, here's the deal. In society today, here's where you're going to get tested. Mm -hmm. Are you going to? Because mm -hmm. the first thing you're going to say is, well, if I go testify to this person, I might lose my job. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You see how this works? Or I, I might, can't get off work. Or, or all kinds of things. Right? All, the, all those things. And who's that now? They're Satan the again, right? Mm -hmm. You better not go. If you go do that, well, you go talk to that man about God, He's you might lose your job. You. Here's the deal. Do you believe God is sovereign? Yes. yes. See how it all goes? Does it get tough? It can get dry as the oasis in the desert. I mean, it can get it can get tough. It can get, it can get dry. But the question always comes back to, do I have belief? Do I have the sovereignty of God in my life? Am I going to hang on? Do I really believe that at this breath, i got inheritance coming in Christ? Because if I do, I can endure this mess, right? Yes. Think about it. If you don't, what do you have? You, you got our government. He announced today that we're thirty trillion dollars, thirty-one trillion dollars in debt. Get ready, folks. He's fixed to announce. He's going to need something.